Welcome back. In this video we will create navigation for our site. To do so we'll first need to fetch it from the database. Now where could we do that? We will need navigation on every page so let's use the front end controller for that. Open it up. We'll need to add our code to the constructor because it has to be run automatically. Now first we load the page model. This is because the navigation consists of pages. And then we'll set a variable called this data menu. And we'll use the page model to fetch navigation. And more specifically, we'll use the get nested method. Okay, now let's open up the page controller and pass our controller data to the layout we're loading. And now we have access to the data, we'll open up the main layout and get ready to start coding. Now let's have a look at the HTML we are supposed to generate from the menu data. It looks very familiar. We've already created the similar markup for the ordered list in our Ajax GUI. So let's just copy that code and modify it to suit our needs. But instead of putting all this code in the layout, let's create a helper function in our CMS helper. We'll call it get menu. Let's paste in the code from our clipboard. And while we're at it, let's create another function we'll use to escape the output from the database with. We'll call that function e. It will take a string as a parameter. And for now, we'll just run that string through HTML entities and return it. Remember the old programming mantra, filter input, escape output. You should never trust data. Anyway, back to the get menu function. Now, the top UL should have a class of nav. So, if child is false, we'll add that class. Now, the nested ULs should have a class of drop down menu. So, we can add that here. So far, so good. And now for the list item. If a page has a child, we should add some properties to the list item. So, let's create a conditional to check if we have any children. So if is set children and if count children is true. Well, if we have children, we should create a Lee with a class of dropdown. Inside, we should add an anchor tag with a class of dropdown toggle and a data toggle attribute for dropdown. The href property should be the slug. And this should be wrapped in a site URL function and that will return an absolute URL. So, if our website is at domain.com and the slug is about, the return URL would be domain.com slash about. Now, we also need to put in that bold tag with a class of caret, and then we can close the anchor tag and add a line ending. You know what? Let's add some more line endings here and here, just for readability. And of course, if we have children, we should call this function again. Pass in the children and set the second parameter to true to indicate that this is a child array. Now, what if we do not have any children? Well, in that case, we'll just open up the list item and add a link to the page using the slug like we did before. After the if statement, we can add the list item closing tag and a line ending. And after the for each loop, we can close the unordered list. And let's not forget to return the string. Now, let's go back to our main layout and delete the unordered list we have there. We'll replace it with a call to get menu and pass in the menu variable we created in the front end controller. Now, let's check in the browser. Nope, that doesn't look good. I'm not seeing any page titles, so let's fix that. We'll add a page title after the anchor tag and run it through our escape function. And let's do the same for slug. And then we need to add a page title here as well. Oh, and I see this needs a closing tag. Sorry about that, guys. Check again. Yeah, that looks quite good already. Now let's check the source code to see if all is well. Yep, math looks good. Now, we'll need to add a way to distinguish the current page. In Twitter Bootstrap, that is done by adding a class of active to the list item. So let's do that. Now let's get back to our get menu function. Now we'll need access to CodeIgniter's super object for that. So let's first get an instance of that and store it in a variable we'll call CI. And then we'll add an if statement to determine if the first URI segment is equal to the item slug. And if it is, we'll set the flag to true. If it's not, we'll set it to false. Now let's make sure we add a class of active to the Lee opening tag if active is true. And here we'll do the same. 
class is active. Now let's check that one more time. Yep, looks good to me. And that wraps it up for our site's navigation. In the next video, we'll create the homepage. See you then.